All right, all right. Back in the action once again. Time to get back to work. It's Thursday evening. It's July the 9th, 2020. My name is Joseph, and as always, welcome back to your nightly newsletter. Now, if you're here for the first time tonight, it's great to have you with me because my job tonight is to help us get ready for the best setups for tomorrow. That's Friday's trading session. And I got a great video in store for you guys and gals tonight. The charts are already in the background, as you can see. We got the E-minis. We got the oil, of course, and that yellow metal. We got gold on our radar for tomorrow. Got a lot of great setups we're tracking for tomorrow's finally Friday trading session. Before we jump in, though, and put the plan together tonight, though, I just want to make sure to remind you guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel that way you never miss all the good stuff we publish every evening on this video don't forget if you have any questions about anything we talk about tonight in the video drop those questions in the comment section below and as always i appreciate you guys tuning in every evening if you tune in and join me every evening if you're like me and you rely on this video to get your head right and get your charts right for tomorrow hit that thumbs up button for me always appreciate you guys supporting this youtube channel by subscribing typing those questions into the comment section and hit that thumbs up button here if you like the video here every evening on this YouTube channel. But enough of the introduction. Time is ticking. Friday is just around the corner. Let's kick off tonight's video with the calendar for tomorrow so we know exactly what we're looking for tomorrow, what time to be at our desks tomorrow. Tomorrow, of course, is a Friday morning trading session going into the last couple drops of this second week of the month. And, of course, uh, we've been talking about the fact that this week has been, you know, pretty quiet as far as news events goes, right? There hasn't been a lot of news all week, but that that sure as heck hasn't stopped these markets from giving us lots of volatility and lots of tradable opportunities here. So we got another another big day tomorrow, right? Another day tomorrow with one news event. Right? It's been kind of the theme all week here, and that's a pretty big deal. That PPI number tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern time. Anytime I see PPI, CPI, I'm thinking inflation. And when I see, when I think inflation, I'm thinking U.S. dollar, right? I'm thinking gold. So you definitely want to be at your desk tomorrow early in the session, especially if you are a gold trader like we are in our trade room. So we focus on the crude, the S&P, and the gold in the trade room every morning. And of course, the gold market tomorrow morning will definitely be on our radar around that PPI number at 8.30 tomorrow. Now, it's also going to be important to keep in mind tomorrow is a Friday. So Fridays are early in, early out. You know, we're usually hunting for trades in our trade room up until about 11.30 Eastern time each morning. But on a Friday morning, though, you've really got to have a good reason to be trading after 11 a.m. And honestly, on this, it's been a really wild, wild week this week. I wouldn't be surprised if these markets start showing a significant slowdown as we go to that 10.40 into the 11 o'clock uh, top of the hour there. So, you know, Fridays are always early in, early out. Don't hit the snooze button tomorrow on the alarm clock. Get to your desk early. Find those setups early. Come join us in our trade room early at 8 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow. And we'll wrap things up relatively early because, of course, it is a Friday trading session. So the two big things for tomorrow, early in, early out, wrapping up the week with a big news report, that PPI report at 8.30 Eastern time. I think inflation. I think dollar. I think gold, right? Gold is definitely something. Or any other, right? Any other dollar-related, uh, uh, you know, currencies come to mind, metals come to mind. You know, a lot of those items will be on our list tomorrow, right, with the PPI number at 8.30. So that's the deal. Get there early. Early, get out of there early tomorrow and enjoy your weekend. That's the plan for a Friday. Don't forget, we always kick off every day, 8 o'clock Eastern time in our trade room. I would love to have you there, right there with me, elbow to elbow, hunting for these patterns with you guys. I'll put all of the membership information for you guys in the description of this YouTube video. Grab that link, get registered, and come join me tomorrow morning at the opening bell. In the meantime, let's get this party going here tonight. Let's grab some charts here, shall we? The schedule's pretty clear for tomorrow early in, early out. Make sure you're at your desk relatively early because of that PPI number tomorrow morning. And we're going to have a great day in our trade room. I got some great charts here in front of us to look at for tomorrow as well. We got the S&P, we got the crude oil, and of course, we got the gold on our radar tonight. Let's start first here, talk about the E-mini S&P, my favorite right now. Boy, this market just was, oh, what a crazy, what a crazy day today uh, the S&P had. Like I said, no shortage, no shortage of, uh, of movement today, that is for sure. Big move down, big move back up, and it looks like, to me, it looks like the market kind of finished itself off inside of a range here. Now, you, you may have picked up on this if if you were to look left right now, right, this is kind of that same range 
we were in before. So I kind of, you, you kind of already knew there was a range there if you watched, you know, the newsletters from earlier on this week. So it's kind of back inside of that original range. But I think it's it was such a wild ride today. I think it's wise to go out and find a new range on this. And it looks like we got a pretty good range, you know, nailed down here. So honestly, you could, you could use the range from yesterday or you could do what I'm doing here and, and mark up that new range uh, here today. So what do we know about the market right now? We know the market, a big move down, but we also know the, the, the bears couldn't hold it, right? They gave it back up and the buyers finished here uh, pretty much in control of this market right now. Bulls have the bias. Bulls have the momentum. And uh, you can see we're going sideways. So if I was to describe this market to somebody, I would say this is a bullish spike into a range, right? It's a bull market into a range. Now, what are ranges? Ranges are balanced. Ranges are magnets, right? Ranges are where all the volume gets traded, right? So anytime I see a range, I know what goes down will come back up most likely. What goes up will come back down. Now, in this particular range, there is a bullish bias to it. So the idea that we're going to go higher and come back down may not be as likely, right? Because we got all that bullish momentum on our side here. But the idea of going lower and coming back up, now that's something I'm excited about for tomorrow. So a bull market into a range. Ranges are balanced. Ranges are magnets. What goes down comes back up. What goes up comes back down. I apply this bullish bias to it. And it's easy to see it's a much better idea buying underneath the range, right, than trying to sell above the range. Not that it can't be done. It's just going to be a little bit lower probability, as you can imagine. So that's the first thing. That's kind of the most important thing. I know we're bullish, and I know we have a range. Now, in a bull market, I'm always trying to find support levels that I can buy off of, right? And so I really like how I can draw this trend line off the high, and I can draw, look, look at how well that fits off the lows like that. That is a dream come true for a hidden channel. Seeing the confirmation like that off of those lows, beautiful. That is a great support level on us, and you can see where it puts us. It lines us up right around underneath the range. I love the combination of the range and this hidden channel. Now, speaking of the range, I also, anytime I have a range market, well, in this case, bullish range, I always start looking for levels just outside the range, right? I love to use expanding triangles, but I didn't see any of those in this, right, in, in, this, in this chart tonight. There's no expanding triangles. I would, I would normally, by the way, I would normally love an expanding triangle, right? Draw a triangle like that. That would be even better if I had an expanding triangle and that channel low. Mwah, that would be that would be the creme de la creme, right? Unfortunately, we don't have that expanding triangle right now. Uh, maybe maybe we will later on in the session tomorrow. So I'm kind of hunting for additional edges, as I call it, right? I don't think these are far enough down. I like this one right here at 31, 25 and three quarters. And so, boy, this comes together nicely. Bull market into a range, hidden channel, right? Channel coming in below the range and it's putting us right around, right around that same spot there. I really like the idea. If I had it my way, what I would do is I'd look to buy right off of this, off of this low. Now, it really has, there's, there's a little bit of nuance to this because if we do get the pullback, I'm going to get rid of these here for a moment. The one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to trade inside the range here. So what I want you to be aware of is there's a little bit of wait and see on this right now. You know, for example, if I, if we go sideways here for a little bit, right? If we go sideways for a bit and then we try to go lower, this is going to be a lot less desirable trade than if we make a move lower right now right? Does that make sense? I don't want to trade inside the range. This is, this is what I call the no trade zone, right? The NTZ. So if I go, sh if I go lower now, I can buy it pretty, pretty easily now. But if it sits for a while and sits for a while, right, that's going to be probably the biggest kind of nuance as we go into tomorrow. And this will obviously be where kind of working with me in the trade room will definitely make things a bit easier for you. But let's talk about those kind of kind of two scenarios here, how, how we trade both scenarios. The first one would be if we get lucky, right, we get that nice, easy pullback. At this point now, I'm hoping that sellers will see that big move down and they're going to think this market's bearish. It's not bearish any longer. It may turn back to being bearish if they can hold this pullback. But right now, though, it's not a bear market. It's a bull market into a range. I want to buy. And if I can see this market pulling lower here, I'll bet I can get a bunch of sellers to try to commit on that pullback. 
right? I'll bet a lot of bears will come in and they'll try to sell that pullback. I hope they do because then I'll know exactly where their stop losses are and I can buy right into their stop losses. We call these failure patterns. And of course, uh, it's basically just a bear breakout pullback that fails, right? And we're buying right into those stops. Now, another thing to keep in mind too is if, it, if we can get this early enough, we may also be able to get a failure into a pullback combination. Now, again, you got to kind of bear with me on this. We don't want to take that pullback if that happens right inside the range. That's the only kind of, again, there's a little bit of nuance to this because it all depends on kind of where we are in relationship to that trading range. So if we really get, again, if we really get lucky tomorrow, it'll be a failure into a pullback combination. And then, of course, my target in this situation is back up to retest that swing high. And if you have an extra contract on, right, the runner up to that big top at 3170 tomorrow. That's the dream come true scenario for the buyers here tomorrow. What if we go sideways though? If we start going sideways here tomorrow, now we make that move lower. Is there any entry pattern that I could use on this? that would prevent me from buying too high, right? Uh, and in this case, right, I'm looking to buy, but I'm worried about buying effectively too high, right? I'm not getting that low enough pullback here. Makes sense? If I get the deep pullback, that's great. But if I don't get that deep pullback, what would be another pattern I could rely on? A trap pattern. Traps are always my go-to. I'll wait for one, I'll wait for two, and we'll trap off this low. Now, don't discount this pattern. This could be this could be all we get, right? We may not get that deep, deep pullback here. Now, look closely to how this pattern sets up. It's basically, as we get, again, that shallow pullback, I'm worried about price getting rejected right in the middle of that trading range. So to, to avoid that, Buy, again, buying high. I know it's not buying that high, but if you if you think the range is resistance up here, you're buying pretty high. The best way to buy low in a in a situation where you're already pretty high is to find that trap. Right? It's one try for the bears, two try for the bears, and then trap high from there. Right? Those are two really nice setups I'm watching for if we can get that pullback. Now, you're probably wondering, you know, how do we turn bearish on this? At what point does it turn bearish? I'll talk about that in a moment here, so bear with me. How about the price going higher here? If the market runs higher, what are some things I'm looking for? Well, first of all, you got to be thinking the top of this range at 3170, 3175, right? That is chances are that's going to be your short term objective here uh, for those buyers. Um, I would put a measured move on here, but honestly, I don't think the measured move is, is, is going to be worth it. I think the big stuff people are looking for is a rotation back on that high. Just because, again, we've had this big, wide rotation, right? So I would imagine that 3170, 3175 area is going to be the objective. So if you think about it that way, there's a couple different options I have. Now, kind of the easiest option would be if the market just runs higher here, what I can do is I can grab a trend line off of that high and I can bring it down to that low and I can look for a buy off a new channel low. And it, typically what that would look like is if you were to kind of zoom in on that area, right, kind of zoom in on that area, that will typically be one of those combination trades we talked about earlier where it pulls back, right, the moving average comes over, the bears try to sell into it, right, and we're buying into stops, we're buying, right, pullbacks right there. So imagine that area right there, right, it's blown up right there, you know what I mean? Imagine that type of setup. It's a seller failure into a bullish pullback off of that low. That would probably be the easiest one as we're going higher, but I'll be I'll be honest though, if the market if the market runs like that, it's just it's just not that realistic that we're gonna get that much of a pullback. You know what I mean? I would love to think in a perfect world, you know, the trading gods will say, hold on, pull it back so they can get in. It's probably it's probably not gonna happen, right? Because if they're making a run like that, you're not gonna want you're you're gonna want to get in earlier, right? You're gonna want some more aggressive entry on this. And the aggressive entry I would look for, because you've got that resistance level overhead, imagine now we jump up. And of course, the moving average comes over. Now disregard this channel here for a moment. That's not really necessary any longer. But if we do see that jump up, right? Let's say we do see that, right? That that jump up here. If we get that jump up, watch for this pattern. It's called a two-try trap. Knowing again that we have major targets overhead and I want to buy high, what's the best way to avoid buying high? A trap. Strong move up, 
shallow pullback, higher high, trap low, right? Watch that strong move up and that trap low. And then what I'll do is, is I'll probably end up drawing it off of that high and then that low to find that hidden channel, right? So you're going to have to get a little more aggressive, right? If it spikes up there, get a little more aggressive, right? Instead of drawing a wider channel like that, which you're probably not going to get, right? Really tighten it up there off those lows, find that hidden channel trap. Now, honestly, you don't need that channel. What you need is that strong jump up, shallow pullback, higher high, and then of course that trap. Where's my targets? Targets are right as we go back up to retest those highs. Now, those types of patterns, I cover all of these patterns, by the way, in my free trading course. My traps, my failures, my pullbacks, all my combinations, I cover all of these details in the free trading class. I'll put a link up there in the upper right-hand corner for you. So if you haven't done so already, I would definitely grab the free trading course. So at the very least, you can follow along with me more on this newsletter. So when I say a failure into pullback combination, or I say a two try trap right off the low of a hidden channel, you can put kind of the words to the images in that free trading course. So again, if you've done so already, grab that free course linked up in the upper right hand corner, pause the video if you need to. I'll be, I'll be here for you when you come back and whatever you do, make sure you get registered for the free course so you can learn this strategy. And again, like I mentioned earlier, I'll put all of the membership links for you, the free course links, all the stuff you need. I'll put it right below this video, either a big button below the video on the blog or in the description of this YouTube channel. Now, also too, keep in mind too, if we have the market going sideways here, right? We don't do anything. We wait for that breakdown. We wait for those bears to come in, right? Try to sell and we buy into those stop losses. If we go sideways here, same thing, right? Same plan as we go higher here as I'd already mentioned. What, how does the market turn bearish for tomorrow? How do we turn bearish on this for tomorrow? Well, the first problem is, is we're too bullish to try to sell this market. So I can't really look for a reversal pattern like a crown reversal. There are a couple examples tonight of where I can look for crown reversal patterns, but we're unfortunately not at a very good turning point for a reversal. The only real place I could look short right now would be A, with a reversal first, a strong move down, a pullback to the moving average, a jump off the moving average. I call that what? A one, two, three reversal, a one, two, three breakout, one, two, three breakout. The only way I can sell this market because we're so bullish, well, not so bullish, but we are bullish right now. Not, not, we're, not, we're not remarkably bullish, but we are bullish. Only way I can sell this thing is if I can either turn this thing around or turn the momentum around to being a bear here. Strong move down, pull back to the moving average, strong jump, jump off the moving average. Again, one, two, three, reversal. Mark that low, mark that high, and I want the first test of the high of that channel. If you watched last night's newsletter, we, we saw a bunch of those one, two, three reversals into hidden channel pullbacks. We saw them on S&P. We saw them on crude. I can't recall if we saw them on gold today. Gold was kind of a weird one. We'll grab that here in a second. But that's going to be the plan for the bears, right, as we go lower. One, two, three reversal, hidden channel pullback. I want that first test right? I want that first test of that hidden channel pullback. And then another thing you want to consider for tomorrow would be if we do end up running up to these highs and we start to stall out, that's where I could look for a crown reversal pattern off of that high. And a crown reversal pattern and keep in mind, guys, this will be later in the move, obviously. We will already have retested those highs. The buyers will come back. They'll try to buy it once. The buyers will come back. They'll try to buy it twice. Notice how I draw this. It's a lower low and a trap high up there. Again, you only want to take these reversal patterns, though, at major turning points, right? That's why I wouldn't do it in the middle of that range. But if we can get up top here, though, and we start to see this thing start to stall out at the highs, watch that one, watch that two, crown reversal, and we're going, we should go at that point right back down into that trading range. Now, there's obviously going to be a couple things I'm missing here tonight, but not to worry. We'll fill in all the, all the details tomorrow in our trade room. In the meantime, though, let's keep this party going. So now we got the S&P, I think, all prepped up for the, for the buy side. Side, and of course, the sell side. Let me get that channel back on, that beautiful hidden channel there. And let's keep this party going. Let's grab some oil here, shall we? So S&P is all good to go. Let's grab some crude oil. 
Now, over on the oil right now, let's take a look here. Boy, that oil fell out of bed today, didn't it? Boy, like it was slipping down a hill. What do we got on oil here? We are ultimately, if, if, some, if someone was to ask me how to describe this market right now, I would say that we had a very strong move down. Uh, anytime I see a very strong move down, I always expect to see a retest of that low. And it looks like they're failing. So if somebody was to ask me, you know, what happened to oil today, I, I would say we got a strong move down, but the sellers have failed to retest that hot, that low. That tells me one of two things. Either A, this thing will reverse, which we can't predict yet, but it's possible, or B, there's actually some sort of kind of range down here that we haven't quite fleshed out just yet, right? And of course, you can see on my chart right now, I am at right now preparing for kind of where that range may be. So in, in, in my, 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 my kind of gut tells me right now, uh, this is a bear market down into a trading range. Now, whenever I have a bear market into a range, and I've talked about this many times on this newsletter, anytime the bear market will range, what is a range? Balanced. Bear market says what? Sell above the highs. What pattern works best? What pattern? Buyer failures. Get above the high, wait for those buyers to come in, try to buy that, try to buy that pullback, and just simply sell into their stop loss. A very, very simple strategy. I don't trade breakouts, I fade breakouts, right? We trade against those breakouts. The other pattern you could use here on this, besides that, besides that one, is you could also look for a one, two, three breakout, which means you'd mark up that low, mark up that high, and trade the first test, right, of the high of that hidden channel. Those are the kind of the two most common ways to trade a bear market into a range. I don't try to predict the breakout, I sell above the range, and if it goes lower, I don't try, whatever you do, do not take that first breakout pullback pattern. That is the one that oftentimes fails. I'm going to wait for that one, two, three breakout. And then as I always say, that first channel test, that's the one, that's, that's where the goods are, right? That's where the juice needs to be squeezed right there. So that's the plan here ultimately for the oil, right? I've got my range. And what I'd like to do is get up so I can sell above the high. That would kind of be the, the kind of the goal of tomorrow, right? Get up, get up at levels of resistance so I can sell above the high. Or if this market can go lower, I, I'd be more than happy to find right that one, two, three breakout and hit the high of that channel. Because you can imagine if we can get this battle zone tomorrow morning, that measured move down there, this battle zone's right on 39, right? That measured moves at 38.42. So if the bears can get this thing moving, they can definitely get down to that 38.42 tomorrow. But we gotta make sure we get some proof here first. So that's a general idea, right? That's the general idea. Now let's give this a little bit of a dose of reality. So I have, I have a bear market, obviously, right? Bear market says, I wanna be a seller. I wanna sell that resistance. Um, I mentioned earlier, earlier that I always like to pay attention to the edges around these ranges. So that level, that level, that would really be kind of where I want the entry to be. You can also see here, I've got some trend lines. Trend lines drawn from wick to body, uh, trend lines drawn from, from wick to wick. And that kind of creates this little sell zone up top there, right? In fact, you could almost like, you could almost like add on another little layer right there. You know what I mean? You could add that in there as well. And then that be, kind of becomes the, the primo, right, sell zone in there. So that's the general idea. I want to sell at resistance using a buyer failure pattern up on top of this range. Then you've got the big problem, right, the big elephant in the room, and that is this rising support trend line. Now, there could be a couple different examples. There could be a couple variations of this, right, of this rising support trend line. And this is where, a lot like with the S&P chart we just talked about, there is going to be a little bit of nuance. There's going to be a little bit of advanced tactics to this because, as you can imagine, if we get a nice big breakout higher here, I can sell with a buyer with, with a buyer failure here, right? But if the if the market barely pulls back and then comes down, see now I've not got a problem. Now I get that trend line coming in. Does that make sense? So when I look at a situation like this, I know where I want to sell. The biggest problem is is this guy right there or that gal right there, right? That trend line is really the biggest variable that I see, uh, which 
Uh, I'll be honest, it oftentimes does result in reversals, but we're not quite there yet. We can't exactly we can't exactly call the reversal just yet because, of course, uh, we're not a bull market. So knowing that, right? Long story short. I don't want to trade the middle. I want to trade above the highs or below those lows. I think the two most important things here um, would be obviously want to sell up here, right? If I can get if I can get a nice strong jump up, right? Take out some of those highs here. I can then look for that pretty standard, right? Buyer failure into pullback combination. Right. This will obviously be uh, this this buyer failure should be pretty easy. The pullback, though, that's the one you got to worry about. Right. Because it does go lower and comes back there. Right. You wouldn't want to take it that low. So be aware of that. The failure should be easy. It's just the pullback pattern that's not going to be right as 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 black and white, so to speak. Right. There will be some gray area there depending on where that trend line is. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Then. We also know, let's just say, for example, we pop up and the market kind of sluggishly now comes back. Or maybe maybe, 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 maybe what it does is, is it comes back fast, right? Comes back fast, tries there. At this point now, now I'm not really interested in that failure now. Now I'm going to do what? Now I'm worried about selling what? I'm selling too low. I'm worried about getting in too close to that rising support, right? That's what I mean when I say selling too low. If I sell too aggressively here, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna get into trouble because I'm not gonna be able to have a good risk reward ratio on this trend line coming off that low. So if I can get this move up, but by the time we get that pullback now, now right now that now we're not very far away now. Now you gotta look for traps. Now traps are key. What you wanna do is wait for one, wait for two and trap high. That'll be the most effective way to avoid, right, to avoid selling too low, as I call it, right? And again, what you want in this example is you want buyers trying once, right? Buyers trying twice, and you want that little trap high, right? Worst case scenario is it's a double top, right? Best case scenario is it's a trap high, and that will allow me now to sell short to finish off rotation, but not selling directly into that rising support trend line. Hopefully that makes sense, right? Now, there's also a chance to, you know, easy come, easy go. If you've got, right, that big move down here, this could also really rip, right? You got that big trend line here. So there's a chance here too, we might really get a strong punch here. If we really punch strong here, it's not a guaranteed reversal yet until they what? Until they hold the pullback, okay? Strong bounces off, off bear markets are not reversals. They are simply selling opportunities for patient sellers. The problem is if it really jumps like this, now I've got momentum on my side. And again, this is why I said there's gonna be some nuance to this as we go into tomorrow. If it really jumps like this, now what I'll do is I'll wait for one, I'll wait for two, I'll draw a trend line across those highs and look for what I call a nested failure pattern. It's basically a buyer failure, but I wait for them to try one more time and then I know exactly where their stops are and I can sell into those stops. So again, real quickly here, a kind of a, a typical move up, buyer failure back down again, a shallow move higher, a one, a two for a trap. And of course, again, right, if it really spikes, it's that one, that two, right, draw the trend line and sell short from there. Now, again, these nuances, right, I talk about momentum. Momentum is a really important part of this. I talk about momentum in that free trading class that I mentioned earlier. So if, if you haven't done so already, grab the free course, get registered, learn more about momentum and how important it is to determining which entry pattern I'm going to use. Now, as we go lower here, can I sell going lower? Oh yeah, you definitely can. The problem is though, I've measured up the amount of the, of, the, of the move above the range and the amount of move below the range. I need to get through this area, right? If you don't want to sell short, I've got to get through that area, which means I really want to see a strong move down, not going to sell this first pullback, but if I can see a strong push through that area now, now it's on. Now I got a bear one, two, three breakout. It's not a reversal because it's already bearish, but it is a breakout of that range. Now mark up that low, mark up that high, and of course we'll sell the first test, right, of the high of that hidden channel. One, two, three breakout into hidden channel pullback. Where's my target? Yeah, 38.42, 38.43, right? Give or take a few ticks there on that big measured move from this big leg here. One leg, 
and two legs down from there. Those are my favorite types of sell setups here for tomorrow. Now, there's a lot of opportunity, though, for the buy side right now. The first thing that comes to mind is if we can get down to that pendulum swing, you know me, I'm not a big believer in trading reversals unless we're at a major turning point. Well, this is a definite major turning point. The pendulum swing is right there at 3906. Look left. That is a big, big low here. And if you really look at this in the bigger picture, this is basically one big spike in channel. It's one big spike in channel. And the base of that channel is right down here which is notorious for being a big bounce area for a rally back higher, right? So that's a big, it's a, it's, it's, it's a nasty looking spike in channel, you can see, right? It is definitely not the prettiest thing in the world, but that's all right. We don't need pretty, we need profit, right? That's what we're here for. So if I can get, if I can get the, the move lower here now, sorry for the delay, if I can get the move lower on this now, get down into that, again, get into a turning point here for me, pendulum swing, right? Measure the top, measure the bottom, support there. Uh, boy, it would be even better if I had some sort of trend line already down here, right? Like, like if there was a trend line down there, oh my goodness, that would just be a almost a guarantee to get that bounce off that low. But no no trend line there right now. All we have is, is that, again, pendulum swing, reversal area there. As I go lower, we're still bearish, right? We're not a bull market at this point. So as we go lower, I want I want one try for the bears. Remember, let them let them kind of wrap the rope around their neck here with these reversals. Bears try once, higher low, bears try twice, trap low or double bottom. That's the trick, right? For that we call crown Reversal patterns, bears try once, bears try twice. That would be a great buy, but again, we gotta get down around that 39 even area, get into the pendulum swing, get into that support level, and then look for that reversal back up from there. Now, speaking of back up from there, that's the next plan for tomorrow, right? What if we do see a jump? Easy come, easy go. This big move down could evaporate tomorrow, and we could be finding ourselves right back up to that 41 bucks a barrel, because after all, I mean, look, look left, right? Look at that monster range right there. Everything really coming together right around that 4070, right? Let's say 4070. We, we don't need to be that specific on that, but that's the general area where these guys want to go. The buyers have one thing on their mind, and that is, can I get off of this low and get momentum back on my side? What would it take here? First of all, got to see a strong move up. Now, a strong move up is not enough to reverse the trend, as we saw earlier in today's session. Strong move up, wait for that pullback, and jump off the moving average. What do we call that? We call that one, two, three reversal. At that point now, mark up that high, mark up that low. You got it. And we're buying that, again, that first test right off the low of that hidden channel. If things really get crazy here, if they really jump, just watch that two-try trap. Strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high, two try trap. And remember, on these types of two try trap patterns, again, what you're doing is strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high. At that point, once you see that strong move up, shallow pullback, higher high, everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting on that on, on that trap here. If I could get that trend line in there, even better, right? Even better to buy on that trend line on the other side. I will also, of course, be looking for any hidden channels. Remember, when you see a strong spike up, you want to make a narrower, more steeper channel, right? It, you're probably not going to get this channel, right? If it really spikes up, you're probably not going to get that deep pullback. It's a little bit unrealistic, right? So if it spikes up like that, I'm thinking, okay, more aggressive channel, it's aggressive move, more aggressive channel, combine that new channel with that with that two try trap and let it let it rip, right? Let it rip back to that 41. Uh, probably not 08, right? 41 even is a pretty darn good number there. So I like the setups here for crude tomorrow. Crude has a lot of potential for tomorrow. Last but not least though, let's wrap things up tonight with the gold. Again, gold, we got the PPI number tomorrow morning at 8.30 Eastern time. And I was thinking tonight, boy, something's up this gold market right now because this is a very con this is probably one of the this is probably one of the hardest charts that we've had to work on all week this week, if not if not uh, for the last couple months here. A very challenging environment here on gold right now. If somebody was to ask me, if someone was to ask me uh, what what happened on gold today, I would say it's a tail of two ranges, and it looks like they're going to fill in the middle tomorrow. A tail of two ranges. We begin this morning with gold, you know, and it wasn't really clear of the range until later in the morning, 
right? It wasn't really clear about that range until about 8.45, 9 o'clock, right? It was a bit wild at the beginning. But once we see the overlapping candlesticks, it does come together here pretty nicely. That is a range. You'll see what happens though, right? The market then shoots lower. And then uh, as I mentioned earlier, anytime I see a strong move in one direction, I expect to see a retest of the low. We didn't get that, did we? And when I don't see a retest of the low, what does that tell me? I'm either A, going to reverse, or B, go into a range. Now, I can't predict the reversal. I'll have to wait for proof on that. There's really no reliable way to predict a reversal. If there was, I would, I would tell you. But there really isn't a reliable way to predict a reversal, which is why I'm assuming now there's probably some sort of range in here, right? Probably some sort of range in here. So it's kind of two, it's, a, it's basically a tail of two ranges. If you are a, uh, if you're a volume profile theorist or an auction market theorist, there'd be a lot of volume up here. Right, a lot of lot of volume up here, um, a lot of volume down here, and they're probably going to fill in the middle. I would imagine tomorrow, right? So a lot of low volume there, right? So in this area, I would imagine that's where they'll kind of fill in a lot of the space here. Look at the chart here, real quick. If I draw a trend line off these lows, same thing above the highs here. Is this a coincidence? You think? Is that a coincidence? That eighteen eleven point four area? You know this coincidence? Have they come down, bounce off it, bounce off it? That might be the biggest clue we get here for tomorrow. It, again, it feels like a range up top, a range down bottom, right? Connect the highs with the trend lines off the lows. I would imagine this is your new range for tomorrow. Now, what do you do in a range? You buy low and you sell high, right? Buy low, sell high. The nuance that goes into this is, the, is momentum. So what is momentum right now? Momentum is bearish, right? So if the market goes lower, how do I how do I buy low down here, right? If this is the range and we have bear momentum, and I know this is a bit tricky, believe me. That's why I said this 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 might be the most difficult chart we've seen here all year at this point, but maybe not all year, but it's a, it's, it's it's a little bit tricky. There's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs that are going on on this chart right now. If we do go lower, how do I buy underneath this range? Because we're bearish, right? So how do I do that? How do I buy underneath it? I need what? A nested pattern, right? Remember that from earlier? A nested pattern? So the best way to buy this market as we go lower is not to get too aggressive because again, we're bearish. Um, let those bears try, try once, try twice, and buy into those stops. Again, I always draw the trend line there, right? Grab the one, grab the two. So if I, if I had it my way tomorrow to buy this market, Right, I would look at buying underneath these swings. As I mentioned, I'm always looking for support swings just outside the range. That'll give me a good risk reward ratio. If I can get down to that low, one try, two try, and right back in. Now, where do you think the magnet will be? The magnet for this is back to that 1811, right? In that area. Obviously, you know, I might not be perfectly correct on this. It might be a little bit higher, might be a little bit lower, but in that area, that's going to be. That's now going to be the magnet back in the middle. So that's the idea behind buying right off of off of that low, right? Buying off the low, and again, assuming this is going to be kind of like a, a triangle, right? As we go into this morning, I want to get down. I want to one, two, and buy back up. Seller failure, right? As we go, but again, because it's so bearish, that's the nuance, right? That's why I've got to let them try. Let them try once. Let them try twice, and then I can buy going back up into that trading range. Now, at the same time here, if we understand that same principle, if we think about this now being the top of that triangle, as I go higher here, can I sell up here now? Can I sell this thing? Well, I can, but here's the problem. What is momentum? And you see, this is, this, is, this is again where there's a lot of what ifs, right? So if we go higher here right now, can I sell the top of that triangle? I can, but what's the type of pattern I need? I need another nested pattern. Why? Because of the trend line. See, boy, the stuff that we learned at the beginning of this video is being piled on right now. So if I get a move higher here, how do I get short on this thing when I've got a rising support trend line? What's my concern? My concern is I'm okay with momentum, right? Momentum be okay. Well, it'll still be a little bit bullish, but let's, let's, call, let's call it okay for now. The big thing though is, is that trend line. That trend line says, I'm concerned about selling too low, right? And how do I avoid selling too low or buying too high? Traps, 
traps, right? So as we go higher here, buyers try once, buyers try twice, trap high to get short back down again. Make sense here? Okay, I know these are a bit, these are a bit more advanced. Don't forget, if you have any questions, right, drop those questions down in the comment section below. Is this exciting stuff though? I love this stuff, right? I love to explore these different opportunities. If you love this stuff as much as I do, right, hashtag still here, thumbs up button for me here on the video tonight. Really, really great guys to have you guys with me here. Love to see all the, all, all the, all the hashtag still here's in the comment section of these videos because you guys are 40 minutes in this video right now. This is where the good stuff is though for tomorrow. Now, I think the hard hardest part tomorrow would be if we sit back in the middle, right? If we kind of go up here and get to sit back in the middle, this will become a new range and we'll focus on buying underneath the range with seller failures. And then let's talk about breakouts because breakout could easily happen tomorrow. This could easily be a breakout environment because there's a little confusion in this chart right now, right? We know we're bearish. So how would a breakout look on this? There are really two breakouts I would look for here. One of them, of course, is the downside, the one, two, three breakout to the downside here. So strong move down, pull back to the moving average, strong jump through. Okay, remember, we don't want to just, I do not want to sell that first pullback because again, we got that strong move. I'm expecting a retest of that low, but there's no guarantee it'll keep going lower. So if I do get that strong move down, that pullback, and if they can hold that pullback, now we know we've got a successful breakout. I'm going to mark up those lows. I'm going to mark up that high, and I want that first test of that new hidden channel. Again, targets are, well, actually not again, but targets are, there's a huge open space down here. I mean, gold, look at that. Look at that huge space right there. Look at that big run up there on gold. Now, I'm not sure if I'm ready to say we're going to 1781 tomorrow, but be aware, though, there's a lot of open space underneath there if these bears can keep this thing going lower here tomorrow again if we can get that one two three break down mark up that low mark up that high first channel test off the high of that new hidden channel a great setup right just make sure you get the first one right not the second and third one the first one is always the one you can trust the most as we go higher here as we go higher here now remember i got these trend lines overhead Right, these trend lines overhead are kind of my biggest problem here right now uh, for these bulls. This is probably the most difficult part of this. Is if we go higher, for example, right? I've got this range up here. So what I want is ideally, I want to see us to go up. I want to see us hold the pullback, and I want to see us really jump, right? Really jump through that trend line. Once I get that trend line, right? I can, or once I get that break above that trend line, that strong one, two, three breakout, then what I can do is I can mark the high, I can mark that low, and I, of course, I can buy that first pullback, right? It was, it's, it's always going to be a very reliable setup if I can get that one, two, three breakout going higher. The one thing I would be concerned about tomorrow, though, is if the market kind of skips going higher, Right, if it kind of you know you know kind of slides higher here and gets stuck back inside this range, this is not a it's not a very difficult situation. But if it does go higher and gets jumped back in the range here now, now what do we do? Now we look to buy underneath the range with a seller failure pattern, or what else? We buy the one two three breakout with that hidden channel pullback. So if we do end up kind of getting stuck inside that range, so to speak. And don't get me wrong, I would love to see if I could get that trend line, right? I mean, wouldn't that, wouldn't that be just the cat's pajamas, right, for that tomorrow? That would be a very good setup as well. But as you can see, though, there's going to be a little bit of nuance. I keep saying that word tonight because it's very, very important for tomorrow. There's a lot of what ifs. There's a lot of issues with momentum and support trend lines or resistance trend lines. So the best way to do it is make sure you guys come back and join me tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We'll be in our trade room tomorrow. I hope I get a chance to see you there and trade with you tomorrow morning. Don't forget all of the membership links, all the registration information, all the free class stuff is right in the description of this YouTube video. Don't delay. Get registered for tomorrow morning's Friday's trading session. And of course, we're here every every Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern time, right? Elbow to elbow, doing it together. Hope I'll see you there tomorrow. Don't be afraid to call the office. If you have any questions, call the office there. And I'm always here on chat as well if you guys have any chat questions as well. Most important thing though, have a great rest of your evening. Get some rest. Get there early tomorrow, early in, early out. Keep your eyes on that gold around 8.30 Eastern time on the PPI report. And hopefully, I will see you guys tomorrow in the trade room. If not, come back and see us again next week on the next edition of our nightly newsletter. Have a great day out there. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. 
Be nice to each other, will ya? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.